I, I made a real conscious decision to try to just think of every take as a rehearsal. Every take is just, okay, let's see what happens. Let's see if we can capture, you know, lighting in a bottle on this take and just, and just, and it makes it more like play, you know, which is really what acting should be, you know. I think for a long time I sort of forgot, I, I was so hard on myself and so worried about not sucking that I, I forgot the play aspect of it. And now when I go on a set, I really just, I try to be as prepared as I can, but then just try to be as relaxed and as playful as I can and, and not use each take to be like, oh, let's just get a better version of that last take. You know, just think like, hey, like, oh, that's, oh, this is a whole new, uh, you know, few moments where you get to have an, ex you know, you get to be and to live and, and, and not have any preconceived ideas of what you're trying to do or how you want it to go and just, just try to be. Filmmaker Magazine presents Back to One with Peter Rinaldi. Josh Hamilton is an actor. I sat down with him in his home in New York City to talk about the work. Do you have a typical way that you begin your preparation process? I wish I did because that would make it more tangible and I could say, oh, okay, I got a job, okay, you know, here I go, start, you know, check, 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 check. But because every job feels to me like starting over again because of the well the medium or the tone and also I'm often you know I'm, I'm someone who usually often gets a job you know a week or a few days before starting something mm -hmm. uh, and so sometimes it's li it's literally just like the practical thing of like oh okay um, uh, you know lines I have to learn the lines like I, I'm I realized fairly late into my career that if I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of slow with, I'm, I'm quick with learning lines well, well enough, you know, and sometimes that's just, you know, especially in TV where it's so fast mm -hmm. and you sort of, but if I really want to have it be, have the lines be second nature, so there's no part of my brain that's thinking or reaching for that, and I really want to just have everything be a completely organic response without having to think about the lines, then I really have to spend a lot of time knowing them and going over them. And I'm almost, uh, not embarrassed, but I, I know that, you know, so many actors that I love, it's like that's their last thing that they think about. You know, they think like, how could you possibly right. learn the lines before you know your motivations and your, your uh, all of your, all of all the other stuff that goes on. Yeah. And I realized that for me, at a certain point I started, especially for plays, I realized that if I could come into rehearsal as much off book as possible, then I can spend that whole rehearsal period just thinking about all the things I want to be thinking about and not thinking about reaching for the lines, you know, because I spent, mm -hmm. I spent years, you know, uh, you know, you have the book in hand and then you sort of slowly get off it and then, and then you get in that bad habit where like you get the gist of the line, you know, mm -hmm. you're paraphrasing a little bit and then you sort of, then all of a sudden you're in the second, third week of rehearsal and like you never, and, mm -hmm. and you don't get them like word perfect and, Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, I just think I realized I was doing myself a disservice by that because mm -hmm. I think it's a small part of your brain. Even if you think you know it, and you're going through it. There's a small part of your brain that knows it's not quite mm -hmm. what the writer wrote. And so every time you get to that line, you're like, you know, you're just saying a few words out of sequence, maybe. And there's a little part that like has a little mm -hmm. hiccup in your in your brain, and you're not fully being able to be present. Mm -hmm. And so now, if I if I have a play. And I have, you know, I, I do, I try to come in, um, you know, off book so that I can just play in rehearsal mm -hmm. and, and, and just try everything. People are afraid, like, tell me if I'm wrong, people are afraid that there's going to be some kind of marriage between the line and something that they're doing before they have it formed. Yeah, right? yeah, absolutely. And this is one of those cases where everyone works differently. And I, and I was... And I've thought about that, and I think, oh, am I going to get married to line readings or you know ways that I've done it in my head before I start working with the other person? And I realize that I'm, I'm, I mean, I could be uh, delusional, but I, I, I realize that I'm actually, I think I'm fairly adaptable, and I don't, mm -hmm. I, I, I can, if I know the lines, then I can do it twenty different ways, uh, and I'm, uh, I'm actually freer to, to. Um, to play with it and change, uh, you know, what I'm trying to do to the other person, yeah. or you know how I hear something, or cause then I can really, then I can really put myself, I can really let my mind go into literally just what I want and what I'm doing, and just trying to talk to the other person mm -hmm. as a person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, one of 
my favorite directors that I've worked with is this woman, Lila Neugebauer, and on the, on the last play we did together, once in a while, we, she, she'd just say, okay, Josh, try it this time as, as if you were a person. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And, uh, and sometimes it's just as simple as that, you know, because sometimes you get so caught up in like some mental idea of what you're trying to do and you're sort of, you forget that you're just talking to another person right. as a person, that you are a person, they're a person, and you're just talking to them. <laughs> I can, because sometimes I, I do, I can get very um, heady and intellectual and, and look at a script and, and go off on these, you know, tangents that of, of what I think, you know, I could be talking about or start doing this kind of research that sends me on to all these, and it can get very intellectual. And that's when I sometimes go back and, you know, I have all these shelves of acting books I sort of go back to. And basically, because I'm always trying to figure out how to do it or how to yeah. get better at it or how to you know, just have as much information as I can. And if anyone has any tips or yeah. secrets or you yeah. know, things that can inspire me or help me. And uh, so I've always, you know, read books with interviews with actors and I, I'm obsessed with acting books. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm constantly yeah. on the search for like, oh, a new acting book, what is it now? And especially before I get a job or if I get a job and I think like, okay, I, I, I need a new acting book to kind of like... Um, <laughs> Uh, so just remember, because I, <clears throat> I, I have to be reminded constantly of like just some of the basics sometimes too, you know. Yes. Of like, yeah, what do I want? How do I get it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. How do I, you know, actually, actually try to affect the person you're talking to? Try to do something to them. Yeah. Um, uh, and then there's sort of just very basic things, like uh, you can go through the script and you know see what the character says about themselves, see what other characters say about them, see what they actually do, you know, if that, it's always interesting to see if that's in line with what they say mm -hmm. that they're doing, you know, mm. uh, you can sort of break it down that way. Mm -hmm. um, but it has so much to do with, with, uh, with the part. I'm always trying to figure out that balance of preparing, you know, or it's, I mean, it's sort of this, it's, it applies to life. You know, it's it's that fine balance of caring and not caring because I've definitely had experiences, especially in film and TV, where uh, you know you, I I, I want to be because you have no rehearsal time and you want to come in and be as prepared as possible, and you work on it and work on it and go over it and go over it, and then sometimes you get there and you're so tight mm. because you've gotten these ideas of how you want to play it, and then you get there and all of a sudden, you know. The director's like, oh no, we're going to be, you know, you're going to be, uh, you know, in your mind you thought it was going to be like a big fight scene running around the room. And they're like, no, no, I just want you like lined in bed together. And you're like, oh wait, but that, you know, and you, mm -hmm. and sometimes if you get too, you have to be flexible enough to let that all go, whatever mm -hmm. preconceived ideas you have. I think when I was younger, especially on film and TV, because I would do, so, do it so sporadically and still do. I mean, like long periods go by. And so sometimes you get to a set and you're like, wait, okay, okay. I haven't done this in a long time. And you realize... It, just to be relaxed sometimes that's the most important I mean in some ways that is the most important thing is to try to be relaxed and whatever that is for you you know whether it's breathing or you know being friendly with the crew so you're not feeling like you know alienated or not being or you're not talking too much and you know it's, you know it's and again for every part every situation it's always different and that's why it always I'm always, okay, what's this one going to require? Mm -hmm. And also tone-wise. I mean, this is something I did not think about. I started acting pretty young. Mm -hmm. as I grew up in the city, and my parents were both actors. Um, and so I grew up around it to a certain extent. Um, and when I was young, you know, all you're really usually called upon to do is just kind of be natural and, you know, be a kid. Yeah. And... And I didn't go to, I went to college for a couple of years because I wasn't sure I wanted to be an actor. I was conflicted, very conflicted about it, even throughout my 20s. And, um, and uh, so I didn't go to drama school. I didn't get that sort of, I didn't have a, you know, a strong rock solid technique. And I wasn't called upon to do that many different kinds of things. Because, you know, usually, you know, you sort of do something, you, whatever you do that, and if anybody sees it, and if you get any sort of response to it, then that's what people think you do. And mm -hmm. then, you know, you sort of keep doing that kind of thing. So unless you make a really concerted effort to like seek out something that's wildly different style wise, or, or, mm -hmm. you know, you, a lot of people kind of stay in the same right. lane or whatever. And my, you know, what I mostly 
did for the first 15 years or so that I was working was, you know, very, very, very naturalistic, often like the writer's alter ego, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I loved being able to have those opportunities. Uh, but then at a certain point, I worked on a couple of plays that were outside of my comfort zone in that way, that were more, um, I, I, I did this production of, a, of it was like a, a adaptation of the Cider House Rules. It was like a two-part um, sort of, st- and it was almost like story theater. It was, it was much more, st- mm-hmm. it, it was like, uh, you know, you'd sort of say the text while you were doing it. And all of a sudden I realized that there was this whole other, you know, many other worlds of styles of performance that I'd never dipped my toe in and I found incredibly liberating and exciting. And I'm still, you know, always looking for opportunities um, to try to do things that I haven't done before, which is scary, but... Um, right, like getting, just getting away from that reality-based yeah. approach. Yeah, and in terms of film and TV, in terms of how I approach them, I think my, my overriding mentality was always just like, don't suck, don't suck, yeah. just do whatever, just don't suck. Yeah, <laughs> which is not like a loose, fun way to like approach work, you know. <laughs> I feel like you could see that in me. I mean, I, I, I just was terrified of being bad, you know, which is sort of death for any kind of artist. You know, you have to be able to, you know, fail and fail again and fail. Right. And it was really difficult for me to start to allow myself to try things in rehearsal that I knew weren't going to work. And now I've almost gone the other way, where I feel like, especially in plays, I feel like I, I spend, you know, three quarters of rehearsal making every wrong choice, mm-hmm. almost like sort of trying to like get them out of the, mm-hmm. like having to just go down, try this, try that, try, you know, and, right. and have that experience where the, you know, you know, the director and the writer and the director are looking at you going like, what is he, is, is he going to do it like that? Right. But you're okay with that kind <laughs> well, of thing for a while. Just I'm so trying to panics, let myself, you know, yeah, panics. I'm trying to let myself not, you know, to give myself the freedom. Yeah to 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 whittle it down and to make choices that are big and bad and and um uh just to sort of so you, so you don't keep yourself in this very narrow box you yeah. know um but with film and tv you know because you don't have the rehearsal i'm still constantly um always for me that's like the big challenge of 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 my work is to always trying to figure out what, what, what tone I'm in. I think Matt Damon, maybe, I'm not sure a lot of people have said it, but you know, like most important job as an actor is to know what movie you're in. Mm-hmm. And it's not something I thought about a lot when I was younger, was like what the tone of it is. I always thought just, you know, just try to be real. Mm-hmm. But I realized that's such a narrow idea of, you know, it's real, what is that? You know, I mean, naturalism is obviously just another style. And especially on film, it's like what you think, I would constantly have the experience of thinking, of trying to, and thinking what I was doing was just trying to be as real as possible. Mm-hmm. And then I'd see the film, and I'd sometimes, sometimes I'd work with someone and they were like, sort of just completely, I'd be like, I'd watch them when we were shooting the scene and thinking like, what are they, God, this, they're not, mm-hmm. you know, they're, and they're not talking to me, they're not, you know, yeah. I'm not getting anything from them, I yeah. can barely hear them, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. like they're not, this feels so yeah. awkward and, and artificial. Yeah. And then I'd watch the movie and they'd be amazing. And I'd be like, wah, 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 you know, <laughs> like just making faces all over the place. Right. Right. And, uh, and I've really struggled with that. And I'm, I, it's something I still, um, I, I'm st- I still try to figure out because every director, every piece, every tone, everything has its own tone. Right, and you know, I, I this goes with this. I heard you say somewhere where you used to actually turn down even auditions for things that didn't that you felt weren't you. Yeah, which I, I, you know I have a huge regret about that. Because and, what, and what does that mean exactly? Like, I didn't explain it right. Like you, you like you, I, I kind of relate to it. Like I know what I can do. Yeah. Because it's like it's it's within my wheelhouse of being able to be me enough. Like I can't, I can't act out of out, too far out of me. Yeah, but that's, that's but, but, mean, but right? in a way, that's sort of the ex- opposite. I mean, that when you think about what acting is, <laughs> right. it's, it should be the opposite. It should right. be like, what can I do? That's the you know. Yeah. What's what's exciting is to be like, what's what's the furthest away from me? And in some ways, some of the things it, it's so exciting when you 
are asked when you if you have the opportunity to get a role that is not at all like you mm -hmm. and then you really get to like surprise yourself mm -hmm. and be like I didn't know I could do that because when you know I think when I was younger because I was always asked to sort of just be like you know roles that were not that far outside of myself I, I sort of I think I assumed that that's all I could do mm -hmm. and I didn't give myself the benefit of the doubt that actually I I could take a leap and try something else uh, that was not in my in my self perception of what I can do, mm -hmm. um, and I think I think I think I I really pigeonhole myself, and which is a terrible thing to do because you're pigeonholed enough in this business right. by whatever people have seen you in last, right. or you know what their their idea of what you can do. Um, and some of my favorite, most rewarding things have been um, things that plays where I was. Sent and, and I assumed they wanted me to do the part that was sort of I considered closer to me, but then like, no, no, we want you to do this other part. Like, mm. um, even with This Is Our Youth, mm. um, mm -hmm. Kenny Lonergan's play, when they first sent it to me, I thought they uh, it was to be f for the role that Mark Ruffalo ended up playing because mm -hmm. it was sort of the more reactive, kind of like, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know how you describe it, but and and uh, you know, Dennis, the character I ended up playing, was this sort of uh, you know, much more domineering, um you know, fast talking, mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of manipulative, um, and and it was so much fun mm -hmm. and so free. And the same thing with um, Hurley Burley, which I know you talked about mm -hmm. with uh, if, even yeah, yeah. Um, uh, again, which was like I, I thought, wow, how did they think of me for this? Right. It's so liberating to get to play a role. I mean, this is such this is like acting one one. I don't know why it took me years. To uh, to realize this, but because um, I know some friends who were like that, their whole they never want to play anyone like themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like mm -hmm. they they read something and think, okay, how can yeah. I, you know, yeah. how 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 can I change myself completely so I'm unrecognizable? Right. Right. And um, and you know now I try to find a I try to look for a balance of yeah. those things. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, it might just be like... Oh, wait, before you do that, I said yeah. one of the thought about, we were talking about tone and, and different yeah. things, and I just remembered a story that was sort of illustrative of that, where doing um, Tom Stoppard's The Coast of Utopia. Mm. I mean, obviously, anybody who, would, if I'd thought about it for a second, I would have realized that Tom Stoppard, you don't, you don't do uh, the same way you would do a Kenny Lonergan play. Yeah. You know, you don't yeah. perform it the same way. And yet, yeah. I, I, I just didn't understand the style of it mm -hmm. and so that's what I mean every job is different because every job for, for now I, I'm so aware of that's when you ask what the first way I start to prepare for a new job I think okay what is the style of this mm -hmm. and I remember being in rehearsal for that and uh, doing a scene with uh, Jennifer Ely and she'd done supper before and you know is a I'm sure a beautifully trained actress and, and mm -hmm. amazing. And, and we're doing the scene and I could tell Tom Stoppard and Jack O'Brien were not um, happy with what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And I and I remember they, they were both talking to me and sort of trying to get me to try different things. And I was very frustrated because I was just trying to talk to her. My whole point was like, I'm gonna try to make Stoppard, you know, really relatable and understandable and naturalistic, mm -hmm. which was, you know, so wrongheaded. But it's just, it's what I thought, you know, like, oh, that's, that's what I know how to do. Okay, so I'm going to try to apply that to this. Mm -hmm. And uh, and finally Tom said, okay, um, Josh, you know, the, the way you're doing it is very believable. Right? It's, it's like you're just talking in the green room. Um, it's very real. Uh, but look, look at what Jennifer's doing. Jennifer is being super real. And I want you to be <laughs> super real. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, for him, if you don't, if you don't yeah. send the ideas out there in a way that the it's audience can understand, like yeah, it just yeah. doesn't. It's like it yeah. just could have. It's it's like trying to. It, it's it's just wearing the wrong shoes to a to a dance party. Right. It's like you just don't. You know, it, right. it's. Uh, and I feel like I've sort of, my whole career, I feel like in some ways has been a, an ongoing process of figuring just uh, of over and over again. Realizing I'm in the wrong style of <laughs> what I'm in, and really struggling yeah. to figure out. Yeah. Like even with and with um, with the Antipodes with Annie Baker's play uh -huh. that Lala Nukabar directed. Um, you know, they like a style. Annie's likes a style of very non-performative, non-acting. Mm -hmm. You know, and so in that rehearsal process, 
I was, you know, the whole rehearsal process for me felt like getting all the acting out of my system, mm -hmm. trying, you know, mm -hmm. and then by the finally, and the, I kept saying like, just do nothing, just be yourself, do nothing, be yourself. I was like, what does that mean? Be your, as soon as someone said, be yourself, I was like, no, wait, wait, I don't even, <laughs> if you tell me to do that, I don't even know what that means. And I was like, no, but no, but I gotta, I gotta, I gotta play all this stuff. It's all, it's, mm -hmm. and they were like, no, no, just say it. And so the whole rehearsal process with me just sort of like getting all the acting out of my system right. and, so that, and so I can just, just say it. It seems like you really relish rehearsal. Uh, and it's such a non-existent thing in film. Like, is this, is this just frustrating for someone like you going back and forth where you know it benefits you? to have that time. Yeah. And so even when you're doing something that's worth rehearsing, I I'm talking about a film, mm -hmm. like where you're thinking, just imagine if we had time with this. Oh, it's, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's everything to me. I mean, maybe because I've always done probably more theater than I get, I've just been spoiled by the rehearsal process. Yeah. And it's just me, you know, I mean, so many of my favorite actors don't even, you know, it's like they would, they never, they don't even want to rehearse on film. They just want to come in and do it. And, yeah. But those actors, it's deceptive because they know how to do the work themselves. To, they, they do their mm -hmm. own internal rehearsal by the time mm -hmm. they get there. And so I've tried lots of different things. And at one point I realized I'd never really tried, or sporadically I've tried working with an acting coach. Mm -hmm. And, and that... Um, it's something I really like doing sometimes if you have enough time because sometimes I mean, again sometimes I get cast last minute and you just mm -hmm. don't have the time um, and sometimes it can also so sometimes it's incredibly um, that's that's the way I've figured out how to do rehearsal by myself sometimes before you get to the set is work with a coach so at least you come in with ideas and you've mm -hmm. explored it and you feel like you're not mm -hmm. just you know um, but it, it can also send you down you know because you, you sometimes you work with a coach and you might just go down these avenues that are completely the opposite of what the director's ideas yeah. are, and then you're sort of, you know, and that can be interesting too. But then sometimes you get on the set and you're like, oh, this 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 is not applicable at all. And I've actually I've sort of let myself go down the wrong mm. road here. Mm -hmm. um, so again, that's why I don't have any. I, I wish I had like, a, you know, a set way of like okay now I'm, I got my script I'm gonna call my yeah. coach I'm gonna work with them and then, and I just have to every time I have to weigh all the variables yeah, and figure yeah. out like okay is this the right thing to work with the coach on okay and um, and really it always comes down to the writing you know because the only way I know how to judge whether like that I made the right choices in preparation is how it turns out yeah. and so sometimes I won't work on a with a coach for something and it'll turn out really well and it's always because and sometimes I will work with a coach on something and it nobody likes it and you know mm -hmm. and it's always comes down to the writing and if it's good writing you mm -hmm. know I mean that's the most interesting thing and I learn over and over again because if something isn't working whether it's a play or if I'm not happy with my performance in a movie or a TV thing I, I you know I, I'm like oh god I just I can't do this I'm I, this is I, I'm you know I'm doing this all my life and I have no idea how to act how do I you know and then if something is working yeah. And you're like, people are like, hey, you are great in this. Or, you know, you're like, wow, oh, maybe I, maybe I do know how to act. Maybe I got this thing. And then at the end of the day, if I really think about it, it always comes down to the writing. And if it's well-written and if it's a good part and if it's a well-written part. And, um, you know, sometimes, you know, you can like, you know, you could try to mess it up and it'll, it'll work if the writing's good, you know. And at other times, if something isn't, isn't, gonna, isn't working, it's, has, there's only so much you can do. In terms of you as an actor and what you need from a director, is there a real difference from theater directors to film directors? Uh, no, I don't think you can make a generalization like that. Mm -hmm. I think there's a, a few different qualities or approaches a director can take that are important in, in any medium. One is just creating... Um, an atmosphere or an energy in which people feel comfortable to do their best work. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I don't, I can't even put that into words what that is. It's such a, a, a intangible thing. Mm -hmm. Austin Pendleton, when he was talk, talking about the, the Chekhov, when he directed Three Sisters, Austin Pendleton is such a lover of actors and he's, and you know, we do scenes and 
he'd just say, oh, wonderful, wonderful, great. And we were like mm -hmm. thinking, really? That's not, that's, I'm sure it can be, <laughs> I mean, yeah. and he, he'd have notes sometimes, but yeah. in general, it's like he was just so mm -hmm. encouraging and enthusiastic and just, and so we created this environment where everyone sort of felt, um, you know, just really loved and supported and, and, mm -hmm. and that led to some beautiful work happening. Mm -hmm. But especially on film, and TV, I, I, you know, and so, so, as again, every actor is different. Some actors have their performance, and they, and they sort of like, they're like, "Don't get in my way, <laughs> you know, don't, don't mess it up. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm doing." And because it's true, bad direction can send you off in a, in a, mm -hmm. in a, in a bad direction. Um, but especially for film and TV, I really, really, really need uh, or, or appreciate as much direction as possible because, again, sometimes what I think I'm doing is not what's coming across. And that can be anything from like, because of the camera angle or, mm -hmm. you know, or maybe I just don't have a good sense of that myself or, mm -hmm. or I, I don't know, but I, I really appreciate an actor say, or a director saying, um, you know, okay, like, uh, and, and I don't mind completely, um, you know, pragmatic things, just like mm -hmm. faster or slower or just, you know. Yeah. Uh, I heard you actually say the words, I almost don't mind a line reading, which I was <laughs> like, I say what? That? my mouth is uh, open. No, no self-respecting actor would say that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, and then you explained it, and I knew, I know what you meant. Like, so you you were saying like sometimes they want to give a line reading, and so they dance around this thing of not yes. giving line, and you're like, just say it. Yes, and yes. it's almost like breaking that thing and just hearing what they. Yeah, because sometimes say. you can tell a director is sort of you know trying to be um, you know diplomatic or, yeah. or, or or sensitive, and they'll say like, yeah. you know, I I felt you uh, wanting to try this, and I want to encourage that, or or you know, mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I feel like maybe you had an idea the other day, and I just want you, you're like. You, wait, you just want me to go faster, louder, funnier? You're, you're like, you can, you can tell me, okay. Because yeah. <laughs> I can, int I, I, interpret, I, I can yeah. interpret that yeah. in ways that are, I can, I can, translate, I can find the reasons it, to yeah, do to that. So I'm yeah. not just doing it faster for the sake of doing it faster. Right. I can, I can say, oh, okay, faster because the stakes are higher and I need to, right. you know, right. oftentimes it's, that kind of thing just has to do with stakes. It's just that, right. you know, the director doesn't know how to say or you know right, doesn't know how to right. put that into words and they just go like oh, i wanted right. to be have more energy and you're like more energy what does that mean like right and that usually means stakes you know right. like just you, you your character wants it that's that's a good point, more, point yeah. right there it's like some I, i'm sure though some actors can't or maybe they're too young or not inexperienced enough they can't do that process of taking that thing putting it through the process mm -hmm. of making it not a line reading and making it putting it through your process of getting that information and you being able to work with it in the way that's good in your process. Yeah, because you know? sometimes you just, you, you just don't hear it in the way yeah. uh, that the writer or the director does. And yeah. and sometimes that's almost because you've done too much work and you've sort of gotten, you, you have some esoteric reason for why you're interpreting a line some way that right. just isn't like, isn't reading. And, and sometimes yeah. you just, you don't have, it's like not seeing the forest for the trees and you just can't, mm -hmm. and sometimes you just need an outside that's you know that's what the director is there for to have an outside mm -hmm. eye to be like oh you know what just actually it's just a little bit more like that and you're like oh wait what what do you what do you mean exactly and um sometimes if i'm having trouble figuring out the cadence or the rhythm of the language of a playwright i just listen to them talk mm -hmm. and almost mm -hmm. imagine them saying the lines oh, yeah. and then you can it gives you it's a real insight into wow. into how the characters speak yeah. Not that every, not that the playwright is every character is them, but I mean to a certain degree, every character yeah. is them. Yeah. And so, and they, and you know, they all have. Everyone has a certain rhythm of, of speaking. And sometimes, if it seems totally alien to you, right. you can really just. It's a real like, little, little uh, helpful that is thing so is just to listen to them. Yeah. I'll read other. You know, I'll read their other plays. You're always searching for little mm. clues, themes that you might want to, mm -hmm. you know, be aware of. Not that you can play a theme, right. you know, right. but you can. If you know that a writer has certain themes, it can put it, put it in the back of your mind and sort of just right. be aware of it. You know, just be, the fact of just being aware of it will sort of permeate right. sometimes what you're doing. Right. Um, wow. But in terms of rehearsal and, and film, yeah, I mean, this film, Eighth Grade, uh, you know, Bo Burnham really wanted uh, uh, Elsie and I to have the, the, the girl who played my daughter, mm -hmm. Elsie Fisher, um, to feel like 
we <laughs> lived together for years, you know, like an mm -hmm. actual father and daughter, which is the exact opposite of what usually happens on film or TV when you come to the set and you're like, hi, this is your wife, these are your kids, okay, mm -hmm. nice to meet you, okay, action. Right. And, uh, you know, there's only so much. Right. So, uh, he, you know, he was very, he, he, um, he really uh, insisted on, you know, a week or so, and it wasn't like a constant full week of rehearsing, but just a lot of it was just hanging out and talking mm -hmm. and just getting comfortable with each other. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, for me, it made all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You are a self-described take whore. <laughs> take whore? Did I say that? Which I never heard. I am. I guess I'm thing. a note whore and a take whore. And yeah. speaking of eighth grade, I listened to the commentary that they did of Bo and Elsie. And oh, do they do a commentary on the DVD? Did. You have to listen to it. Ah, and huh. they were saying in the famous fire scene, uh -huh. which, by the way, if I ever want to cry on cue, I might even cry now. Thinking I could just think about your face when oh. she jumps on you, man. I mean, I, I'm almost ready to cry. <laughs> yeah, that was a beautifully but, written scene too. I mean, that's the thing about writing. It's like when you read that script, you're like, oh, come on. They were joking that you wanted a lot of takes. Yeah. But he was making it sound like something wasn't happening to the point where people were saying, I guess these were producers around? I don't know. They were saying, I don't know if we should do the hug. And Bo said that he was flipping out saying, it's because it isn't working right. Once it works right, you'll want the hug. When I heard that, I was thinking, I've, I have felt that pressure as a director in my small time little things, like where people aren't understanding it and they're waiting for lunch or something. And you're like, these people need more time here to get this. I was feeling that. And then I was thinking, what if he, as a first time director, gave it over to them and just said, yep, this isn't work. Like, thank God, like that moment needed to happen in this movie. There's a lot of things that are great in this movie, but that seals up the whole movie. Well, I think knowing that, being very aware of that, probably I had put a lot of pressure on myself. And uh, I think that's probably why I wanted so many takes, is I knew that this is the... It had to be right. Yeah, yeah, this is the sort of the money scene yeah. in some ways, I mean, for their relationship. And so I, uh, I just wanted it to be as good as it can, could be. It's funny, when I first saw the film, I remember just thinking, I couldn't believe what a beautiful film Bo had made. And then we got to that scene and I thought, yeah, I blew it. Really? <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Well, sometimes you don't know. No, I'm not a good, uh, I'm, I'm not a good, um, you know, yeah. some, I'm always impressed when actors are, are you know, this, whether on, because on film, I think you really can't know it because you just don't, it's like, you, I, I mean, I, it's just so out of your hands and the way they edit it and the, but on stage, you know, there's some actors who are like, oh, it's a good one tonight, good one tonight. Yeah. And if I know if I ever feel that way, it's the kiss of death. You know, yeah. if I ever if I ever think like, oh man, what a great show. I really I really hit a home run tonight. And those are the nights you come out afterwards and, and people are like, hey, it's good, good job, great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the nights where I think I'm on stage and I'm like, oh my God, I'm, this is the worst. I'm so, I'm, I'm, I don't know, this isn't, this is going terribly. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm completely, uh, I, and those are the nights and people are like, that was amazing. Yeah. I love that show. And I, I've just realized I have no gauge. And because usually if I'm in a place where I'm, if I'm in a place where I'm able to have a positive <laughs> take on what I'm doing, I mean, right. that just means, it means I'm not truly being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Because if you're truly vulnerable and truly in the moment, it's hard. It doesn't feel good. You know, I mean, for me, it does, it's, it's, it's a painful way to be to be truly vulnerable i mean mm -hmm. people spend most of their lives avoiding being truly vulnerable because it's a it's an uncomfortable place to be and yeah. you know that's why so many actors are such or maybe uh not that well adjusted or, or yeah. you know have a, a yeah. struggle through life is because you know they're spending a lot of their time <laughs> trying to be as vulnerable as possible which is a really painful right uh uncomfortable you know state of mind to be in right and what was what was your experience with that shooting he made it sound like he was running around he, he he said i was running around with my head cut off bo said that yeah that's so funny he didn't seem like that at all he seems so uh remarkably um yeah self-assured and uh isn't it interesting yeah how like that that's also a good director keeping whatever insanity's 
going on away from yeah. you guys. Yeah. I mean, as soon as I figured out that you could think of film and TV not as, you know, I talked about when I was younger, I'd be like, just, oh, especially coming up in independent film where you yeah. had like, you know, two or three takes tops, you know, that's all they could afford. That's all the film they could afford. And you'd be like, okay, this is yeah. it. I got it. You know, sort yeah. of that same concept though with that last scene of like, you know, knowing how important it is. Yeah. And that's, and that's just the opposite of how you want to approach your work. And a combination of so many things being shot on digital now and having the more freedom to have more takes. But also, more than that, I made a real conscious decision to try to just think of every take as a rehearsal mm. and not think of it as like the, the has to be the best mm. version of this scene because mm. it's going to be in film, it's going to be there forever. And, you know, it, and I, I, so I just ha I enjoy it a lot more when I think about um, every take is just, okay, let's see what happens. Let's see mm -hmm. if we can capture, you know lighting in a bottle on this take and just mm -hmm. and just and it makes it more like play you know which is really what acting should right. be you know right. I think for a long time I sort of forgot I, I was so hard on myself and so worried about you know not sucking that I I'd forgot the play aspect of it right. and now when I go on a set I really just I try to be as prepared as I can but then just try to be as relaxed and as playful as I can and sort of think like oh well, let's yeah. you know Okay, and, and, and not use each take to be like, oh, let's just get a better version of that last take. You know, just think like, hey, like, oh, that's, oh, this is a whole different, you know, this is a whole new, uh, you know, which is what it is. It's yeah. a whole new, uh, yeah. you know, few moments where you get to have an, ex you know, you get to be right. and live and, and, and not have any preconceived ideas of what you're trying to do or how you want it to go and just try to be, just try to be. Let's assume, hopefully, that this is the middle of your life. Okay? Indeed. What do you need to have happen career-wise? Or let's not say career-wise, because that sounds... What do you need to have happen artistically for you on your deathbed mm. to be like, mm. second half, success? That's such a good question. Um, it's funny, because I, I, my mother-in-law is uh, an astrologer, mm. and... I check in with her every now and then, and mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like open to it. I'm not like a, a you know, dogmatic mm -hmm. about it, but you know, I certainly appreciate what she tells me sometimes when she checks in. And she's always said that my, and that my success, and I don't, you know, that can be attributed in lots of different ways, but that, or that, that I was going to sort of work more or have more, a, a, a richer career in some ways in the in the later mm -hmm. part of my life, and mm -hmm. I've always found that very comforting because yeah. you know it's better than the other way oh, yeah. right. you don't want to peek at you know 16 um and so i mean what i want it's hard to have that kind of perspective looking back but i do know at this point what i really want is to surprise myself to to to, to do things where uh i think i i didn't know i could do that and just not play it safe, um, you know. And it's tricky because you know, whenever you do something that people respond to, like for the next year or so, those are the, those are the jobs you get. You know, people are interested. in You're like, oh, he's a, you know, oh, he's a warm-hearted dad, you know. And then you know, and I've had that in so many different ways. Where like, you know, I'll play like a, a drug dealer, and for the next year, like, I'll just be like, oh, he's a skeezy drug dealer. And you think like, you know, and you sort of have to really, you know, I mean, every actor will tell you this, yeah. but you have to be, um, you have to balance that need and desire for work with also not sort of staying in the same mm -hmm. same um you know just getting outside of your wheelhouse a little bit mm -hmm. i mean for me the important things have always it's been you know who who you're working with and and the writing and so i would like to feel at the end of my life that i was given the opportunity for better and or more and more uh just the roles you know, just to have that to have you know to have the opportunity to do beautifully written interesting roles that where i can um you know affect people and 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 learn things about myself and, and just mm -hmm. life in general i mean this you know if you're going to do this it's this such a weird life mm -hmm. such a weird thing to do and so you know you really have to search for the great things about it which are you know i love getting to 
learn about all these different ways of being and and yeah. uh, and worlds and you know the research you get to do and going and living in a strange city for three months sometimes and and the other thing I do I want to make sure though is feel like I balance because you know when once you have kids you really that whole thing about being away from home and balancing a career it becomes a real mm-hmm. uh, you know when I was before I had kids and I'd have friends who had kids and they'd be like oh god I I, I, you know, I got this movie, but I, I have to go like be in, you know, Hungary for four months, and I'd be like, and it's really hard, you know, I really miss my kids. And part of me would be like, what are you, but you're complaining about having like a great job for four months, and I, yeah. and now that you have kids, you're like, right, I don't want to, you know, yeah. I don't want to miss any of it. It's so fast, mm-hmm. and so I'm always trying to figure out like trying to find a job that I can make a living and is a yeah. good job and want to yeah. do, but isn't gonna, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, miss you know, my kid's entire 12th year, you know, right. or things like that. Um, so I want to feel like I had a good balance between work and mm-hmm. um, and my family so I don't sort of think like, wait, I, I missed my kids growing up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I just want to feel like I, I, I kept learning and I kept, mm-hmm. um, you know, I kept being a better person to act with, mm-hmm. you know, and I, and I, because I, in some ways I feel like I'm, I'm I have so much more to learn about really being the kind of actor I want to be. You know, I just, I, I don't want to feel like I ever get complacent. You know, mm-hmm. you hear about some actors and they're sort of thinking like, oh, just, you know, it's a gig, it's a job, whatever, get me in, get me out. You know, I just, I never want to become um, cynical mm-hmm. a- about it. Josh Hamilton, thank you. <laughs> thank you for, uh, for, for coming down. And let's give a thank you to Kevin Corrigan for putting us together. Yeah, Kevin, exactly. It's, uh, yeah. I really Thanks, appreciate Kevin. that he did that. Yeah. Let's do this again. Great. Okay. Yeah, I'd love to. Back to One is a production of Filmmaker Magazine, which is a publication of IFP, the Independent Filmmaker Project. It's produced by Spencer Rain. Listen to back episodes of this podcast at filmmakermagazine.com or wherever you get your podcasts.